I was always interested in old stuff, uh, and I, I used to go out to the uh, junk stores on Route 44 in Seekonk and look, look at this old stuff. And uh, in the late 60s, like a lot of people of my generation, I ended up in San Francisco for a time, and I noticed that all the things that were in the junk stores in Rhode Island were in the antique stores in San Francisco. My older brother and I and another partner rented a truck and filled it up with this Victorian furniture and leaded glass lampshades and that type of thing. Trucked it out, we rented a storefront in Corte Madeira, California. We opened Mount Ararat Antiques. We sold the stuff, I ran the store, and I quickly realized that what I really liked doing was working on the furniture and not running a retail business. This is the sound of the 19th century. My father at the time was uh, diagnosed with cancer, so I thought it would be a good idea to come back to Rhode Island and reunite with my family and see if I could find a furniture maker to apprentice to. I found a guy in Allenton, Rhode Island, named Johnny Northup, and he was an old swamp Yankee, if there ever was one, and he was a wonderful teacher, and I worked for him for four and a half years. I was very influenced by his aesthetic. And his aesthetic was, if it was early, it was good. If it was late, it was bad. And there was nothing worth keeping made after 1815. And so I thought, well, that, when I started, I thought, oh, that must, be, that must be the way it is. At this time, in 1975, the program in artisanry had just started at Boston University. And I heard about it through John Kirk, who's a famous furniture historian, who was something of a mentor to me. And he was going to be running the American Studies Department there. And then uh, John Kirk asked me if I wanted to be in, in the undergraduate or the graduate level of the history class. And I said, I didn't know what was the difference. He said, well, there's a test. You have to take a test. I said, okay, what's the test? And he said, I'll give it to you right now. We're standing in a hallway in a classroom building in Boston University. And he opens up his briefcase and he pulls out two black and white eight by 10 photographs of two different Chippendale chairs. He says, okay, one of these is an original period Chippendale chair. The other one is a centennial reproduction. Which is which and why? And I said, well, obviously, this one's the centennial. Look how shallow the carving is. He said, okay, you're in. <laughs> this is a chair that I made in 1977 when I was at Boston University as a grad student. The assignment was to make a 10% chair, meaning that it was bent to be engineered 10% above the breaking point. I can pick out here, there's an oriental influence to the crest rail, and uh, I had been looking at uh, Egyptian furniture. So you can see this, the swag to the front rail that would be reminiscent of uh, Egyptian stools. What I found was that it's really the overall aesthetic that matters, not the period or the style or the country of origin. When I graduated from school in 1978, I asked the people at RISD if I could have a little show at Woods Gary Mansion. The turnout was fantastic. Uh, I got a commission out of it and sold a piece out of it, and I've been going ever since. I've been very fortunate. The whole process, thinking about a piece, designing the piece, drawing the piece, making the piece, finishing the piece, delivering the piece, it's like a life process that starts and ends with each piece, and some of them are more successful than others, some of them are difficult. This one belonged to my great-grandfather. It's an English tool with a walnut handle, beautiful brass works. I have this set of chisels, Buck Brothers. These also belong to my great-grandfather. I was born in Providence, Rhode Island in 1952, lying in hospital, now women and infants. My mother's ancestor, her mother's maiden name was Hazard, and one of the Hazards came over with Ann Hutchinson, and uh, he surveyed the streets of Newport in 1639. He helped lay out the streets of Newport. My great-grandfather, Frederick Roland Hazard, started a manufacturing business up in Syracuse, New York, the Salve Process Company. And this place at Narragansett was his summer home. This was the carriage house 